It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to cover Zential. Now if you've never heard of this, it's really a nice piece of software and exactly what it says here, it's an easy Linux alternative to Windows Server. So if you've been trying to run a domain controller, Active Directory, things like that, and you've been kind of having a hard time with it, or if you say to yourself, you know what, Windows Server is fine, but man, I hate paying for per core, per socket, per this, per that, per, you know, everything that they just nickel and dime you to death whenever you want to run a Windows Server, then Zential might be the option for you. And if you're going to start a business on open source, I highly recommend something like Zential because it does give you that flexibility. So I'm coming at this from the perspective of I'm the business owner. I want to run my business on open source. But you as a business owner may not be able to choose what your clients run. And a lot of them are going to run Windows. That's just what they get right out of the box. Unfortunately, from every manufacturer in the world, it's a Windows based machine other than Apple. And when they have Windows, they're going to want Active Directory or you might want Active Directory or the client might need Active Directory in order to get things set up and to make it run smoothly and honestly to make it easier for you to manage. Now, there are options that are Linux based like Free IPA, which is great, but getting getting Windows to talk to Free IPA is not simple. It's not super straightforward. It is a little bit convoluted, actually. So I think Zential really kind of fills a gap today. Now, the great thing about it is it's open source. It's open source, you can get it, you can run it. And you're gonna run what they call the development version, which is kind of the community version. But if you want the commercial version, and this is really serious, when you're running a business, you may need support, you may want support from Zential whenever things aren't going the way you think they should, when things aren't functioning right, maybe you misconfigure something and you can call these guys and get some help, they can help you, they offer that. You can absolutely buy that. And when you buy that, that supports the open source part of the software for people who are just coming up and trying to start using it. So there's really a benefit to everybody across the board when they're, when there's open source projects that have support offerings. So I wanted to throw that out there. I want to always make sure that you guys understand that free in the open source world does not mean like free as in free beer. It means free as in the freedom to do something with software that you want to do. You can change the software. You can modify the software. You can share the software. So keep that in mind. Freedom is super important when it comes to software freedom, but it's really not just free as in beer. It's great that you can get it that way, but sometimes it's better to pay for support. It's better to pay to keep things running that you use every day as a tool. All right, so we're going to set this up. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can just get their ISO. So you can come here to their main page, and you'll see the free trial stuff. But if you go over here to the community, you'll see here this development edition. And, and this is the place to download the ISO. Now, the ISO installs the operating system plus Zential all together. Makes it really simple. If you're going to install this on a virtual machine, highly recommend this method. Um, I did try to install this on an LXC container. I, I was definitely having some errors and I'm not sure if it's just the way that I set it up, but you can install it on top of an existing Ubuntu installation. So there is that possibility that you have a script that will install the stuff on top of Ubuntu for you. It's not something where you have to wipe a machine specifically to install Zential. And they have a script that does it. So you basically go get the script and you can just run that. And that those instructions are out there on the Zential site as well. But today I'm going to use the ISO. We set up a Proxmox server in the beginning of this series. So we're going to, we're going to use that thing. So I'm just going to go here to my test Proxmox server. I'm going to right click. Well, actually, just to get the ISO, and we've shown this before, but you can come here, you can right click, and then you can click on copy the link. So you just click on copy the link. And then you can come here and you want to go to wherever you keep your ISO. So in my case, I keep it here in local and then ISO images, ISO images. And then I'm just going to say download from URL. I'm going to paste in that URL and then I'm going to hit this little button here. And it's going to go look and it's going to say, hey, I see this ISO. Is this the one you want? And if it is, then just click on download. It's going to download it and get it set up. Now, I've already got it, so I don't need to go through that process. But if you do, pause the video, go ahead and get it, get it ready. And then you'll have it here wherever you're putting your ISOs on your Proxmox system. Once you've got that, you can right click up here at the top and you're going to say create VM. It's going to come up and ask you some questions. What's the name of the VM? So we're just going to call this DC. For now, this is my domain controller. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Zential, whatever you want to call it. Um, in fact, let's just do that and make it easier to find. Zential, here, there we go. And then we're going to go to the next thing. Here it wants to know where am I going to get this image from. So you're going to go to local in my case. And then I'm going to drop this down. It's going to show me all the images that I have. And I want this one that says Zential. I'm going to click on it. Next, we're going to go to system. I don't think I need to do anything here. Everything looks fine. 
on the discs, I'm going to give this 64 gigs. I'm not going to put a lot of stuff on this machine, but if you're going to put a lot of stuff, you might want to change this to something higher. If you're going to put shared user spaces on this machine, you're, you're going to want to make this a much bigger disc, of course. So, you know, find the disc that you have space to do that with. Now, you could also just mount other discs and then set up user spaces, but just keep that in mind. I'm going to use my VMs because this is an SSD. It'll be a much faster disc. And then I'm going to just move on to CPU here. So I'm going to give this four cores. I don't need to give it much. Probably don't even need to give it that much, but we're going to give it four cores. On the, on the memory, we're going to give this 40, 96. On the network, vert IO is fine. We're just going to leave that like it is. And then we're going to confirm all of our settings, make sure everything looks good, and hit finish. So that's going to create our new VM and it's going to be right here. There it is. It pops up. Once it pops up, we're going to right click on it. We can do start and then we're going to jump over here. We're going to make sure it's highlighted. It's going to go to the console for us. So that's good. It's already starting. It's trying to load up. All right. So we've got Zential up and this is kind of what you're going to see initially. So I'm going to make this full screen and my language is English. You feel free to pick the language that makes sense for you. But since mine is English, I'm just going to leave it on that and I'm just going to click in there so that I have this highlighted so that when I hit the keyboard, it knows what I'm doing. I'm just going to hit enter. And then right there, I'm going to hit enter one more time just to get the, the Zintial install started. All right. Again, just pick your language and then make sure you pick the right region. And again, pick the right language, English US. And again, I'm English US. Now you'll see it run through several installation steps. It may take a few minutes, so just be patient while it runs through these things. So it wants to know for the host name, what do you want to call this? IT Pros DC. And then I'm going to hit tab and enter for continue. And the username for my account, so I'll give it my username that I want. You can do the same for yours. And then hit tab and continue. And then a password for that user. Make sure you type in a nice, long, strong password. And then we'll tab over to continue. And then we're going to type in that password one more time. So it's going to try to detect your actual time zone. So if you're putting this in like a virtual private server up in the cloud, it may have the wrong time zone. So if it's not the right one and you want it to be set to your time zone, then go ahead and hit no and set the time zone. But in my case, it's correct. So I'm just going to hit enter for yes. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up. And that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. All right. Once it finishes, you'll get this message and it's basically time to reboot. So we're just going to hit continue. Once it reboots, you're going to come to a screen like this and it's going to continue a little bit more installation and configuration. All right, once the Zintial uh, install opens, it's really a desktop. So you can see down here, we've got a little LX menu. We can click and open. And you've got normal system tools, but it, it automatically pops open your Firefox browser and takes you to localhost 8443. So you can access it this way. You can completely work in this. You can just click through the security warnings and work here if you want to. You don't have to though. So we can just go here to the LX terminal and we can do IF config. And in this case, we got the IP address of 56. So we can just close this and we can actually just close the browser as well on the virtual machine. And you can see there it's a virtual machine desktop. So we can go hit the summary, kind of see what it's doing. So you can see it's using a good bit of memory in this case, but it's only, we only gave it four gigs. But we can open up our browser and we can go to our IP address at 8443 and we want to put HTTPS in front of that. And there's our warning, which we know this is the machine we want to get to. So we can just click through those. And then we're going to use the username and the password that we set up during the install. And then you're going to see a screen like this that says the initial setup is about to start, but you've basically installed Zintial. You just need to run through the initial setup and configuration now. 
So we're going to click on continue. And when you first come in, you're going to see a screen like this. And it's going to say, hey, what are you wanting to use NTL for? And there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff that you can install and configure and unpack. So this thing really does a ton. The first most major thing is the domain controller and file sharing. Now, I just put out a video on email setup with calendar, contacts, cloud storage, things like that with Mail in a Box. But if you wanted to use this, there is the option to do this as well. Now, I've never tried to configure it on here. I'm not sure what it takes exactly, but you could check this box and actually get mail and, and some other things put in there, groupware. You can run this as a DNS server, a DHCP server, and a firewall. So again, everything you want to run, you need to check the little, you know, click the little things to check it. So when you click, it checks. When you click again, it unchecks. Um, now, yours is probably going to be white. I have the, the blocking... Um, the, the dark reader mode on. So here, it, this is what it normally looks like. So this is probably what you're going to see. So just be prepared that it's not going to be dark unless you have the extension set. But this is what it looks like when it's dark. Then you have additional services down here, which there's a bunch. So I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these right now, but there's a lot of stuff that this, that this actual Zentail server can actually do. But the first thing we're interested in is domain controller and file sharing. That's, that's a great first step in really setting up a professional system that our users can utilize and that we can put to use with some of the other applications that we're going to be using out there. So I'm going to hit next and it lets you know here's the things that I'm going to install in order to give you that capability. So you can just hit next. Let's go start doing the, the install. So again be patient because it takes a little while for it to go through this. So now we're going to set up the network interfaces. So in my case, this is an internal network at CZ0. So I want to make sure that internal is checked. If you're using one that's external to your actual network, then you would want to check that. But most likely you'll be using internal. Once you've got that, just click on next. It wants to know whether you're going to use DHCP or static addressing. Um, completely up to you, but since we already know what the IP address is of our server, since we went and found that, we can go ahead and set this as static and then we can type in what we have. So 192.168.10.56. The gateway here, or the net mask is correct. And, and my gateway is going to be dot one. And my DNS server is also, is I can set up uh, my two. So for DNS, I'm setting up my two pi hole servers because that runs the DNS for my network. So next is going to come here and say, okay, it's a domain controller, but do you want this to be a, a, the master main controller? Or do you want this to be an additional domain controller on the system? So in our case, we want this to be the master domain controller. And it wants to give it the, wants to give it a domain name of Zentiel domain dot land. That's not what I want. My, my domain is macg home dot loc. So I'm going to put that one. And it gives you a little warning about changing the server name. We're just going to click OK. And now it's going to go through the process of getting all of that stuff configured. So again, just be patient while it goes through that. So I've seen this a couple of times, even during my practice, where it'll be doing this part and it's, it gets to the end here and it just says, you know, saving the web admin module and it just stays. So this has been going for minutes now. It shouldn't take that long. I don't think it, it seems to get stuck. So just be aware if it does, it's okay to basically kind of just back this out to the IP address and then just hit enter to kind of refresh the page, try to reload it. Uh, the server just may be stuck in a weird position or something. So see, it's trying to load the dashboard. It's just not quite ready. So once it loads the dashboard, you should be up and running, even if it didn't say it actually finished. If it gets to the web admin module, you should be good. So one of the first things to do is go over here to network and then interfaces. Just make sure everything looks good on your network interfaces. Make sure that everything looks set the way that you wanted it. If you don't, you could have issues accessing the system later. It should be fine, but it's always good to check that just to make sure. So if we start back here at the dashboard again, you'll see that it goes out and it checks every time you load the dashboard to see if there's any updates. And it'll tell you if there's any updates that are needed. So that's kind of nice because you can click on the updates section here. You can see the updates that are here and it kind of warns you like, hey, you know, this could break something. So if you have the system in production, you might want to be real careful about it. But right now we've just started it up, so I'm going to go ahead and run all the updates. So it always gives you this warning that the packages have been installed successfully, but it says your web administration may be unresponsive for a few minutes or a few seconds just because it's kind of refreshing things in the background. So just understand that. We're going to click OK, and it should come back, and then it sh we can refresh to see if there's any packages that need to be updated. So you can see right here it's trying to reload everything. It's kind of waiting for the system to be back up and ready.
All right, once that completes, we can go back to our dashboard and it's going to tell us that we don't have any updates pending, which is great. And we've kind of got everything ready. Now we have Zential installed. Now there's a whole lot of modules that can be enabled and set up. But first, I just want to start with setting up our domain controller, making sure everything's working, and then actually opening up a Windows client and setting it to use the domain to log in. So we want to have a user, we want to have a shared space, we want to have some things set up. So we'll kind of go through that process and make sure everything looks good there. But really, Zentiel is, is installed, set up, ready to start using, and it's got a lot of capabilities. So I'm kind of excited about this piece of software for our business. I hope you guys are too. Stick with me and we'll get into the domain controller setup. So you're going to want to SSH over to your server and then you're just going to do sudo apt update and then two ampersands sudo apt upgrade dash y. This is going to take it through a normal Ubuntu update and upgrade process. I've found that there are some packages that just don't get updated during their installation process. And I think that's what's creating this hang up with the web admin module. So I go through this step and then once it's done, I just reboot the server let it come back up and you'll see this little save button up here in the top right. It's wanting to, to save some changes to the web admin module or anything else that you may have changed in the system. Um, again, if you click on this, it's going to say, okay, we're going to try to do this. Go ahead and click save. You can see if it'll go ahead and run through the changes that have been made. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. It seems like it gets stuck in the last step. And, and I think it's, it's really not like the web admin module specifically that's stuck. It's just that it sticks on the last step of whatever it's trying to do. I, I don't know what it is about this version that that happens, but I usually just go up here and get rid of the extension. Just go back to the port number and just hit enter and it'll give it time to load back up. It'll probably pop back up with the save button here because it, it, it has something that it flags that it either completed or didn't complete. But I just wanted to point that out. It is kind of a weird quirk that it has right now in this version. I'm, I'm assuming that they'll get that fixed in the next version. You got to remember, this is the developer edition. If you want to try out the commercial edition, they have a 45 day free trial. You can try it and see how it works and how it functions as well. Once you get past those little quirks, we get to this dashboard and you have a few things that should be set up if you kind of went through the domain controller set up in the wizard. If you didn't, you can just do it in here as well. So we'll go down here to domain and here you can see that it's got the domain that I've set. So if you happen to see like it's not set here, you'll want to pick, you know, domain controller. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for the people on their mobile devices. And then here you'll see the realm. Now, if this realm is not your domain that you were wanting, then you'll want to update these things and get it, get it changed and edited. So here it pulls out the domain name, the actual net BIOS domain name. Now this realm is the one you're going to want to use on any windows or, or, or your Ubuntu machines for actually like getting to your login screens. This is just the name that it gives it automatically as a server descriptions, NTL server. It's up to you if you want to change it, it's fine. I mean, it's nothing that, that you're going to use for anything. Then you can enable roaming profiles. That means people who move from computer to computer can log in from any computer and it's going to set up their profile so that they have a similar Windows desktop experience and folder setup and things like that. It's kind of up to you to do that. If you have people who are moving around a lot, it might be useful as long as they're not storing things on every single local machine drive and it's all being stored, you know, maybe on your server or on a, on a share drive. Probably fine. If, if, if really people aren't going to be doing that very much, I wouldn't enable this. It's just me. Um, and then it gives you the share folder uh, drive number or drive letter is H. And then you click on change if you need to make any changes. Now, if everything is set the way you wanted it, then, then you're doing pretty good. The other thing we want to check is our DNS setup here. So there's not a lot to set up, but you want to make sure that you have that domain here in the domain section and just make sure that it's got a, that it's got a row set and that it's checked. And then finally, we want to go to the module status tab. And make sure that your domain controller and all of these things are turned on and enabled. If they're not, then you're going to want to enable them and go through the process of getting them enabled. Now, I didn't have to do any of this. This was already done after it came to the wizard. I didn't have to go set up anything manually, but I wanted to point out the locations where you would set that up if you needed to set it up manually. Once you've checked those items and everything seems to be set, your network is set, you know what your IP address is. And if you'll notice, I've, I've redone this even since I started the video. So I've got a different IP address that I set, but that's neither here nor there. Um, 
then you're going to want to go to your Windows machine and set it up. So what I've done is, is I've already done this, but I'm going to walk you through the process at least of what you have to do to set this up. So I'm going to show you first here on, on the net admin. So in Zential, you need to set up some users and groups, and we're going to go here to the users and computers section, and we're going to click on manage. Now here you can see kind of a tree structure similar to what you'd see in a Windows configuration setup, which is, I guess, to make it a little bit more comfortable for one thing. Now here you can see the Win10 computer that I've already used to log in once, so it just automatically detected this. I did not have to add this here manually. What I did was I went and I made a couple of groups. So when you click on groups, because I have this zoomed in, you'll see this plus at the bottom, and when you want to add groups, you just click on plus. So here we're just going to leave this as a security group. We're going to click on the group name and we'll call this group name payroll and payroll. And if you have an email that's a group email for them, you can add that. If not, just click on add. And then you'll have a payroll group here. When you're ready to add users to the groups that you've created, you'll click down here on users. Now you'll notice there's a couple of users that are defaulted in, but I've added a few users over here myself. So this first one that I added was domain admin. So we'll set up one that's actually called full out, full out domain admin. So you'll want to add some kind of domain admin. Now your user is already in the system, but it's a little bit different. So you'll create a special user for this purpose. So I'm going to call this domain admin with a hyphen there and then domain admin and description is optional if you want it and then give them a strong password so that they can get into the system. And then we're going to do uh, groups that we want them in and we want them in the domain admins group and we're going to click on add. Now you go back to users and this is where you start creating your users. So for instance, I created J userman and I put him in the developers group, but we just created the payroll group. So we'll create a user and we're going to call this person um, H Mills and that'll be Henry Mills and he's in payroll and we'll give him a password here and we're gonna put him in the payroll group right here and we're gonna add him and now so if we go check out our users we'll see that we have Henry Mills right here and he is in the payroll group now in the payroll group we can go here and actually create a shared drive location so we're just gonna call this um, the directory name, we're just going to call this payroll. We're going to add that directory. You can see Henry's already in this group. So it tells us the group share has been added for payroll. Great. And you can do that for any of these groups. So on this one, I did not create a group share. Um, oh, yes, I did. I created a group share that's called dev share. Pretty simple. Uh, and then on the, on the admin group, I don't have one yet. But I have shares that are set up. So I have Henry and I have... Uh, J Userman, so I've got a couple of people and they're in a couple of groups and there's shares set up for those groups and there's a machine that's already been logged in. So once you've set up the users and the groups and the shares that you want to have, you can now go over to your Windows machine. Alright, so when you come to your Windows 10 machine, you're going to want to set up the machine to be ready to be logged in from the domain. Now, one of the things you need to do is actually set up some of the networking stuff. So we're going to go to control panel. There we go. And here you can go to your network information. And then I just go over here to the change adapter settings on the left and click on the adapter and then click on properties. And if you've not done this before, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to go in here and find TCP IPv4 and then click on properties. And you can see here, I've already set this as a static IP address and I've got the gateway and the net mask there, but this is probably what you're going to want to do. Um, if nothing else, you need to set it at least with static DNS. And what you're going to do is set your first DNS server as your actual Zential server. So this is the IP address of my Zential server. You can set your other DNS server as any DNS that's on your network. If you're using Pi-hole or something like that, you can set that as your secondary DNS. If you want to use Cloudflare or but this first one needs to be your domain server. Uh, once you're done with that, you'll click OK and of course go through the process of letting it update your, your information for your IP information and then click OK through all of these different things. 
And then we're going to go here and open up the little file explorer. And on this PC, you're going to right click and click on properties. It's going to open up a setting screen. And then I scroll down until I see rename this PC with advanced in the uh, parenthesis here. Click on that. It's going to bring up your PC naming uh, dialog here. There's a change button here. We're going to click on it. And right here you can see that I gave this thing a different name. So I gave it the name that I wanted for this machine. So it's JUserman-Win10. This is going to be his machine. So if this was somebody's laptop, desktop, whatever, virtual machine, if this is the only person who's going to use it, this would be a good way to name it so you can tell whose machine it is. It's up to you how you name this. It doesn't matter. This, this name doesn't really matter that much. But here you're going to see that it's going to have this checked. You want to change it to domain. And then you want to make sure you type in that domain that you have over on your Zintel server. So when we go back here, if you'll remember when I went to my domains, I have macg-home.loc. That's what I typed in here on this, on this virtual machine's domain. When you're done, click OK. It's going to spin for a second and it's going to prompt you for your domain admin user and, and password. That domain admin that we just created and the password and we add in the domain admins group, you need to type that into the dialog that pops up and then you will be ready. It'll, it'll go ahead and if once you got that done, it'll spin for a second. It'll come up and tell you, okay, this thing should be on the domain. You need to restart to get the settings to take effect. So it'll pop up a little dialog that says restart this computer to get the changes to take effect. Let it reboot. Once it reboots, you'll be back at this screen most likely. You can just swipe up or hit the space bar. It might ask you to hit control alt delete to log in. And you'll see this prompt for your local user. Just click over here. And you can see here, it already picks up my domain because I told it what the domain is in that dialog. So now I can type in JUserman and his password. And I can, I can log in and you can see it goes and picks up his information from my domain controller. So it knows that it's Joseph Userman. I didn't type that in anywhere. The system went and got it from the domain controller. Now, the first time you log in, it might take a little bit longer, but it's going to set up this thing for J Userman. Now, we did set up a shared drive. So what we can do, we click on this PC, and then if we click on the network, it should start searching the network to try to find other machines on the network. So this is kind of what we're looking for. So you can see I've got quite a few things here. And then what we want to find is backslash backslash IT pros DC and you can see as I type that so where I'm getting that name from we'll come back over here so if you remember I've got macghome.loc as my as my realm my domain is macghome but then we've got this netbios computer name and that's IT pros DC that's the that's the computer name I set up during the installation wizard so that's the name that I'm typing in here to actually get to my network shares so you can see it's offering up some sh some share drives that I can choose from and it doesn't offer up the payroll drive, if you'll notice, because I, I as Jay Userman, don't have access to the payroll drive. I only have access to this dev share that I created. So I'm going to click dev share. It's going to go. I should have read write access. Let's see if we can create a new folder. And this is Jay Userman stuff. There we go. The folder's created. It let me save it. That's great. Now, I can always try to traverse back to this location. I can set up this location as an actual mapped network drive. So I can say map this network drive. I can give it a drive letter. And I can say finish. So now I can access this drive just like I would on any other drive, just by going to this PC. And then I'm going to have my mapped drive letter right here. I can click on it, and then there's my folder. With Zintial, we've set up a domain share, we've set up a domain login, and we've provided a share drive location for our user that they can then map on their Windows machines. So our, our user's getting logged in through Windows through the domain controller, which is pretty great. Now, of course, you can just always go and do sign out, and you can switch users, you can do all the normal things you would do, and, and really it's just going to function. Okay. 
We've got our domain controller set up. I've shown you how to go and set up a Windows user to log in through the domain and how the shared folders work. So now we're going to talk about Linux. And in this case, I've got a Ubuntu install. And I've just run through the installer, a normal Ubuntu installer. And I've gotten to this point here. So we're going to go ahead and type in our name. And it will uh, try to fill out some information here. We'll change this name to something a little more useful. OK, so we give it a. a name we got a username here we put in a password for a local user but then you've got this checkbox down here that says use Active Directory so we're gonna check that box and you'll see that it highlights the thing that says you'll set this up on the next screen so we're gonna hit continue and right here it tells us here's the domain what domain do we want to get so I'm gonna type in macg home loc and it says test connection and it gives us a little check mark if it's able to find that domain controller, which is great. Now the domain administrator. So this is the domain administrator account and the password for that domain administrator. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to go ahead and do the normal install for Ubuntu. So once this install completes, we'll kind of check out how we can log in using Active Directory through a Linux install instead of through a Windows install. All right, after we've set this up during the install to use Active Directory, there's still some steps that we have to do as a local user. So we've, we created that local user account. So we're gonna log in with that local user account and I'll kind of show you what you have to change. And it's very similar to what you have to do on your Windows machine, which is make sure that your DNS uh, depending on your operating system, just find your network settings. It, it's going to differ depending on the, on the OS that you're running, but go to settings in this case. And here we've got network, and here we can see we've got our wired connection. When you click on the little gear icon on Ubuntu, you'll see your DNS servers. You need to make sure that your DNS server, the first DNS server listed is your domain controller, um, and make sure it's the IP address for your domain controller. If it's not, you can click on IPv4, type in the DNS servers you want, and then turn off automatic. Um, if this is still on, it's just going to pull whatever DNS servers are coming from your, your router. So make sure you turn off automatic so that it takes these, click apply, and then you just want to turn off the connection for a second, turn it back on. And you should be set whenever you open up settings again, you should see the proper DNS server now as your domain controller. Once you've done that, you can close out and you can go here and log out. Uh, we'll log out. And then when you come into your Ubuntu server, you can click on a, that little link underneath the name to go to a different login screen. And we'll do hmills at, and then you want to type in your domain, macg-home.loc. So in Windows, where you do the domain backslash username, in this case, you do username at the domain. So it's kind of like an email address, even though it's not an email address. Press enter. Then put in the password for the user you're logging in and it should give you a little message that says it's creating a home directory for that user on this machine. And then just be patient while it does that and it'll log in. And now you have your normal startup kind of wizard for this new user that you can, you know, do all the things you need to do, click through it, everything like that, and you're done. Now you're logged in as a domain user with a Windows domain on a Ubuntu Linux desktop. So we've done it, we've done it that way. If you didn't do that setup originally, in the installer getting this set up is a little bit of a different story i don't see a place in the settings to set up the active directory login information um, so there's a problem with that uh, to me that you can only do it at at, at the initial install uh, maybe there's some stuff that it has to install so it has to know like hey i have to install these things in order to set this up it'd be nice if there was a graphical component uh, in ubuntu to do this after the fact because if you have a machine that you've already got set up today you know, it's it's not so easy to get that kind of really ready to be logged in through Active Directory. There's a bunch of stuff you have to go install separately now. So we'll cover that in a different video. But now you see that we've got things running from a Windows side and from a Linux side on Active Directory. And we were able to do all of that just because we installed Zintiel and set up our domain controller. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. Um, when you want to start doing like group policy and things like that, there's some tools that you can install on one of your Windows clients actually. And when you're installed, when you're logged in as the domain admin, you can then use those tools to push out group policies through Windows to the Windows machines and so on. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. I think this gives you a really easy 
low barrier to entry way to get Active Directory set up on your network. And if you're going to be in a professional environment, that's going to be really important. And the ability to kind of have logins and, and control permissions and things like that is going to be important. So I uh, thought this would be a really good one. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. Thank <laughs> you.